Hello, 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 hello. Good evening, St. Luke, St. Luke and uh, New Hope and Point Pleasant and Wesley Chapel, uh, uh, Mount Canaan and all of the other churches that are listening uh, across the Shreveport district and uh, other people that are receiving and watching uh, uh, this video, Book of Memorial, Carolina Bluff uh, and others. God bless your hearts. Listen, um, this has, I have, I started recording uh, this lesson. It looks like a couple of hours ago and I uh, was ready to get it out. I was on schedule and, uh, and uh, I was just about finished at one point and somebody uh, knocked on the door uh, and uh, that interrupted it. And I, after they left, I got going again. And then I had a, a, a power outage, amen. And uh, so I decided I was going to have to start again because I, 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 this is a great lesson and uh, I look forward uh, to that. I'll just have to put a sign on the door when I'm recording uh, so that people don't and uh, don't uh, knock on the door uh, or ring the bell, uh, amen. But that's okay, that's okay. I'm just determined to make sure that you get uh, this message here. You all are aware of our giving methods, you know them. And I just want to make sure that you have them uh, there. You can mail them to our recording steward. You can mail them to 2110 uh, Martin Luther King, uh, 7107. You can mail them to, uh, I'm sorry, you may uh, use our Givelify platform. And I'm going to work on, I gotta, I'm going to get that uh, in our, uh, in the, I'm going to post that uh, hopefully in the Facebook and the, um, Facebook and uh, the YouTube uh, link on tomorrow. I wanna to try to make sure that I get that done. Uh, I'm doing the best I can to get that done. So those of you who would just desire to give uh, as well, and uh, I'm working on uh, getting a cash app um, uh, as well, uh, so that we can find as many ways and methods to give that we can. I've noticed that a lot of people uh, don't necessarily use their uh, the, the, the Givelify platform, but people are quite apt to utilizing the, uh, the cash app there platform. Praise the Lord. Thank God for technology. Amen. Tomorrow morning, Sunday school lesson is going to be great. I already feel it because I've seen the lesson. I've read it. I've been studying it for the last couple of days, and there's going to be some great insight that is going to come uh, from this particular lesson. So make sure that you join uh, with by phone. There's your number. Uh, and also by computer, by smartphone, by a pad, uh, you may use uh, this, the 820-0485-6656, uh, and the passcode, of course, 748987. Amen. It's 1045, 1045 St. Luke on uh, YouTube, and of course, on Facebook. Uh, we'll be there. We'll be ready. Uh, we should go live at about 1038. Uh, to 1040 and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be done. We'll be done by 1130, give you time to get you a good nap or, or do whatever uh, plans or provisions you made uh, for the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't really care uh, which team uh, wins, uh, but I'm going to uh, hopefully, I know somebody will, uh, so I don't know. I think I, uh, I'll i just watch uh, uh, probably up to halftime and uh, be ready to go to bed uh, from there. God bless you there. Uh, our February birthdays, God bless you. Uh, Gloria Casey, the widow of Miss uh, uh, Brother Joseph Casey, the late Brother Joe Casey. I just left their names on our list there. Uh, Henry Bradford, uh, Brother Henry, amen. My drummer uh, and uh, my son, God bless you uh, on your birthday uh, this month there and uh, wish you uh, the very best. Uh, Jewel, God bless you, Jewel. I uh, know that you are watching this and you'll be watching us in the morning uh, as well as you celebrate your birth month and uh, want you to know that, uh, yes, uh, uh, you uh, have shared that to thank us uh, for our uh, concern and prayers offered during the time of you all's bereavement uh, with the death of uh, Brother Al's uh, brother, Anthony. And we certainly uh, continuing to pray uh, for that family and others uh, who have had uh, uh, bereavement concerns uh, during uh, this time frame. God bless uh, each of you uh, as we continue uh, to worship as well. 
uh, our call to evangelize uh, at this time uh, is our Sunday school lesson. Let's look at the lesson today. It's a call to evangelize. Now, to evangelize means to, to spread, to share the word, and to win uh, souls uh, for, for God and to, to save lives. Now, last week I talked about uh, the role of women in the church and how the role of women has transformed. And uh, in from modern, uh, from, from uh, historical times to uh, modern contemporary days, and in the New Testament, the role of women uh, was such that women were, uh, had specific roles designed uh, for them. And in this instance, Jesus uh, uh, breaks through the taboos of, of racial, if you would, and gender barriers. Because if you recall, the, uh, the Samaritans, as we talked about before, when Jesus uses the parable of the Good Samaritan, uh, he then uh, 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 uses the Samaritan for a particular reason. He says, a certain Samaritan, because the Jews themselves had uh, a pretty negative uh, uh, history, uh, a bitter, uh, mean-spirited history with uh, the people of Samaria. So Jesus then uses this woman as an evangelist, as a messenger, a helder, hel heralder of God's message for salvation. Now the setting is Jacob's well. Jacob's well sits um, uh, near, I believe it is mentioned in Genesis 33. It, it sits um, in a place they, the archeologists cannot find it now, but it sits uh, in near the village of Sychar where Jacob uh, uh, and his uh, family uh, and his, his servants uh, uh, set up, uh, scripture says, and they pitched their tent, which means they set up a community and built a community uh, there uh, as well, okay? So Jacob's well is there. This is our setting for Jesus meeting uh, the woman at the well. Now, I know that the lesson begins at verse 25, but in order for us to fully understand what's going on, I, I must give you some background from the beginning of John, uh, beginning of John chapter four. Now, to help us put in perspective uh, this, this woman, I'll just show you some of the verses that help us gather this. In verse seven, it says, there comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus talks to her and tells her, give me something to drink. Yes. And the woman's reply was, the nerve of you. You're a Jew and you're asking me for something to drink. I am a woman of Samaria. Don't you know that our people don't have anything to do with each other? Don't, don't, don't you understand that our people don't even associate uh, with one another? And so consequently, here they are, this dialogue that's taking place. Jesus talking to the woman. He, he tells her about it, the living water that he has to offer her. But here is the dialogue. Well, this is where I want us to get to understand. Let's go down to verse 12. She says to him, well, are you saying that you're greater than our father, Jacob, who gave us this well? And he drank from this well himself? Yes. And Jesus says to her, now, wait a minute. Whosoever drinketh of this water that, you, that I ask you for, they'll get thirsty again. But the water that I'm talking about to give you, you will never thirst again. Now, Jesus uses this this beautiful uh, 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 metaphorical uh, personified, uh, uh, if you would, example or model to say to her, I'm going to give you water that will cleanse you and that will fill you and, and that will sustain you. Yes. The woman says, uh, you, you don't have anything. Uh, you didn't even come here to draw. You didn't come here to draw, but Jesus says, go call your husband. Now, this is where the conversation becomes where many times we get bogged down because the lesson sounds so sensational when the woman answered and said, 
Jesus said, go, go call your husband, bring him back. Go get him and bring him back here. The woman said, I have no husband. Jesus says, yes, you, you, you're telling the truth because you, had, you have no husband, but you've had five. And he whom you now hast is not your husband. Here's what many times we do. And the mistake we've made is that we have contemporized this passage because we hear of a, a five husband circumstance and we automatically focus on the woman's lifestyle or the woman's perceived life behaviors that we might consider ungodly and sinful. But what I wanna show you something is this, that in the culture of that day, it would have been impossible for a woman to divorce five men. The text, the, the scriptures talk about uh, the Leverite, the Leverette, uh, if you would, a, 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 a vow or promise that, 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 that men made in those times where they would take on the wives of their brothers. Uh, if that brother was deceased uh, uh, and the wife was considered to be his property once she was no longer the property of a father. So, so, so this woman could have been widowed five times. This woman could have been cast aside uh, by men uh, 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 five times. This, th th this woman could have been the victim of mistreatment as opposed to uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the inclination to think that this woman was in this place and in this position because of her own actions and her behavior. So I want us to expand our mind toward this woman and her circumstance. And the reason I say that is because notice how this woman goes from having a, a, a conversation about her life to now this woman talks about theology. Yes, she does. Look at what she says. She says, our fathers worshiped here in this mountain. A and you say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. She starts talking about godly things. Yes, that's not something that an ungodly woman would have done. This woman had been to church because Jesus, then Jesus answers her and says, well, the hour is going to come when we will not uh, worship in this mountain and we won't worship at Jerusalem. Yes, verse 23, for the hour will come. In fact, it now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in both spirit and in truth, because God the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, Jesus helping her, and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. Verse 25, now, 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 this is how I know the woman has been to church. The woman has been around the word of God, because she says, I know that the Messiah is on his way. And then she says, in fact, he is called the Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. And then Jesus continues this theological dialogue. And Jesus says, I that, I that speaketh right now in front of you, I am he. In other words, you're talking about the Christ, but hallelujah, you're talking to the Christ. So, so, so this woman was not, a bad woman. This was a woman of who, who knew the word. This was a woman, I believe, of, of certain circumstance. And so I don't preach the sermon from the standpoint of the, 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 the woman's perceived reputation. I want to teach this lesson from the per perspective of maybe this is a woman who is not a fallen woman, but a woman who's fallen on hard times. Yes. Very, very possible. And upon this came the disciples and they, they, they were focusing on, here he is talking to this woman. Remember the gender, the gender conversation. Yet no man, none of them even said, well, what, 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 what is she looking for? Or well, why is he talking to her? They didn't say a word. But then look at verse 28. The woman left her property, her water pot, and went into the city and told the men, listen again, she went into the city and told the men, come see a man which told me all these things that I had done. Is this not the Christ? <laughs> it, 
if the woman, this woman had been exposed to God's word and, and knew that the Christ, the Messiah was coming. And then verse 30, this, this solidifies this, this, this to me. Then they went out of the city and they came unto him. In other words, they listened to her word. They listened to her text. They listened to her message. They listened to her herald the Christ. And they came unto him. You see, part of being a witness and evangelist and an evangelist and to evangelize for God has to do with your, the perceived perception of you and how people view you and your behaviors and your actions. In the meantime, the disciples were saying, Master, you need to eat something. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. His disciples said, did somebody bring him something to eat? And Jesus said, no, 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 no. My desire, my fulfillment is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Yes. Now, do you not say that there are four months and then come at the harvest? Behold, I say unto you, four months to plant. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white all ready to harvest. They're ready. They're, 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 yes, the wheat is ready to harvest. Scripture says, and uh, 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 look at the, the harvest. Look at it. It says this. It says the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Yes, I, I, this woman realized that if the Christ is to come, I must take the message. I must labor, yes. And he that reapeth, look at what it says, receiveth wages, gather fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. In other words, he that, he that sheds and spreads the seed of the good news is to rejoice along with the recipient of the good news because the sharing and the receiving of good news is to bring about a contrite spirit and a changed life. One soweth, another reapeth. That's what the woman at the well did. That, that's what I want to remember about as somebody who sowed. Jesus sowed into her and she sowed into the men and the men followed her. Yes, and they followed her as an evangelist, I sent you to reap. Yes, whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you are entered into their labors. Yes, I need to say this to preachers of my generation. We, 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 are, we are beneficiaries of other people's labor. I, 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 I'm the beneficiary here at St. Luke of, 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 of previous and former pastors. Yes. Every, every pastor who hears this, that, that there was somebody who came before you. Every lay person, there was somebody who came before you and put things in place and, and, and set up things for you. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him because of the woman which testified, he told me about myself. Now, don't get me wrong, in that time, there were people who, 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 who were uh, 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 soothsayers and uh, but there was something so authentic about this woman's testimony yes that she had credibility so when the Samaritans would come unto him they besought him that he would tarry and stay with them and he abode he stayed there for two days when when, when they received the word from the woman who we said who we've been taught had an ill repute uh a bad reputation, if you would. But, but, but we see what the woman becomes a life-changing, a change agent for these people's lives. And then many more believed because of his own word. In other words, some believed because of her, and then others believed because of his teaching and said unto the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, but we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the savior of the world. They, they, they say, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 heard what you said, but 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 now we believed what you said. But now we know because we have experienced him for ourselves. And these are the type of people and evangelists and testimonies that God is looking for is those who can indeed tell what God has done for them themselves. What lessons can we learn? Well, be willing to cross into another person's territory. Sometimes we stay uh, within ourselves and within our own group, but, but in order to, to witness, we have to be willing and able to witness wherever we can. Secondly, engage sometime in conversations about God's work in your life. You ought to tell somebody, incidentally, accidentally, on purpose, tell somebody, oh, the Lord did this, and the Lord blessed me with something. It's not bragging. Sometimes it is. It's about letting people know what God is doing. Identify a person's cravings as you witness. The more you talk to people, you will listen and find out what they are searching for. This woman was at the well, but the woman's desire was not water. You missed that. She was at the well, but her craving was for a relationship with God because her conversation dealt with worship and the things of God. And then be one who worships God in spirit and in truth. Yes. What a great word. What a great lesson today. I thank God for it. And tomorrow, St. Luke, I'm going to preach from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. Go ahead and read it. Last week, I left it off, and I was reminded that I didn't tell you all what the lesson, uh, the sermon will come from. But tomorrow, I'm going to talk about um, uh, uh, Numbers, chapter 6, beginning around verse 24. Uh, the the Aaronic or the priestly benediction. One of the things that people tend to suggest is that modern contemporary music is not based uh, in scripture, uh, Christian music, but it is, it really is. Uh, we've been singing this song for a little while, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. And I'm gonna talk about tomorrow. Be blessed, be blessed. I already am looking forward sharing that word. My brothers and sisters, God bless you. God keep each of you is my prayer. And I pray that this lesson will bless you tremendously. God bless you tonight.